For the first time in this series, we can actually say the Rockies are in the playoff hunt. We're five and a half games back right now with the Padres and Braves, the top two teams in the wild card standings. And this is the team that we're hoping can give us our first playoff berth of the series. The trade deadline has passed. We added Brian Reynolds. We traded away Javi Baez and Raimel Tapia. And we'll see if this team can get there. We are closing in on our win total from last season at 67. After a big sweep of San Diego, we end up dropping 2-3 or three to Washington and then lose the first three of this series in San Diego. We swept them in Colorado, so now we're trying to avoid the sweep in San Diego as we take a look at David Geronimo's progress this year. He's up to a 79 overall. And the patience has truly paid off, where in the beginning of the season, he was just hitting around 220. He had that opening day home run, but then we didn't hear about him much for a couple of months in season. With other players on the team struggling, there was no one to really take away his playing time, and that allowed him to find his stride as a rookie, becoming July's Rookie of the Month, and now having a chance to hit between 20 and 30 home runs. 15 coming into this matchup. Colorado scores early in this game, trying to avoid the sweep. We head to the fifth inning, 7-2 and a drive from Geronimo. It's down in center field with the failed diving attempt and the speed of Geronimo allows him to turn this into a double. He is second on the team this year in doubles. Later in the inning, Dom Nunez trying to bring him home. This one's hit the shallow center, but the catch is made. Trading Javi Baez got easier when I compared his stats to Geronimo's, and you could basically see Geronimo taking over his role in the offense. He's batting fifth now, but you could make the argument he should be batting fourth over Ty France with how much the power has been on display in the last couple of months. Late in this ballgame, San Diego closing the gap 9-8. to eight. Geronimo not able to make anything happen here, so we go bottom nine. Taylor Rogers, our only all-star, has had a really good season. Picks up a big strikeout here for out number two. One more to go. This batter, by the way, was four for four on the day up until that strikeout. Up to Manny Machado. And he pops this one up in the infield, and Ty France takes care of it. At least avoiding the sweep. He's head-to-head, -head, so vital. Not a good series overall as we entered the episode five and a half games back. Hopefully some more games against San Diego to come. But if we're able to pull this off and make it to the postseason, I think it's going to be because David Geronimo continues this hot streak through the end of the year and he becomes the Rookie of the Year as a result. Now, we take that last game against San Diego, and then win the first two here in San Francisco as we get into Game 3 in the rain. 64 and 59, we only won 67 games a season ago. Very close to matching that already. We have Kevin Gossman taking the mound for the Giants. 8-8 eight eight on the season, just a 1-0-9 whip. The Giants are just not putting up enough offense to be competitive this season. In the first inning, Brian Reynolds. We traded for him last episode. He's had some good games, but starts his day with a flyout. And Ty France follows it up with a strikeout. One, two, three for Kevin Gossman. Once again, we have Yanni Chirinos taking the mound in this game. And I've really enjoyed pitching with him. Tends to get through innings pretty quickly. This one's hit to left center, and Geronimo's got it. Not always the flashiest pitcher, but so effective. Ground ball to the right side. Quick two-hopper to France. Inning over. That takes us back to David Geronimo. The average continues to climb. 249. Here's a ground ball to deep short. We saw the speed of Geronimo earlier, and this time it helps him beat out the infield single. Brendan Rodgers batting fifth in this game. Ryan McMahon gets the day off for this matchup. Rodgers, patient, count runs full. 
Geronimo going with the pitch, and it's a ground ball into right center field. It's a hit and run. Geronimo takes third base. Don't often see that play anymore in baseball. Runners at the corners, and Trey Turner grounds one into right field, just reaching out, but putting good contact on the ball. Probably not a good first pitch to go after, but it's elevated a bit. Tend to always go after those. Two on now for Connor Joe, and this gets past the catcher. Both runners advance, and there's still nobody out for the Giants. Connor Joe with a chance to do some damage. It's hit to center field and down for a hit. Turner stayed put. The run will score. Two nothing Rockies. Later in the inning, we're back to the top of the order. Two in scoring position. And Nimmo hits it right to second base. Two on the board for Colorado. Could have been more. But I think the offense is trending in the right direction. Bottom two. Behind the bag, Trey Turner. He has moved back to shortstop. He's playing really good defense. And Rugnet Odor, he's got some power. This one's blasted to center field, but Reynolds has enough room to get under it. One, two, three inning once again for Yanni Chirinos. We'll go to the third. Runner on first. Brendan Rodgers just grounds this to the right side. Nothing special. Ends the inning. And that's when the rain delay hits. When these have happened before, it's usually after like the fifth inning. So it's a convenient time to make a pitching change. Here with a 90 minute wait, I just assume it's a good idea to bring in a new pitcher. So Austin Gomber enters bottom three. Joey Bart at the plate. That one is smoked to center field and Reynolds will not cut it off. Bart has pretty good speed, especially for a catcher at 50. He is in with the double. And that leads off the inning. San Francisco trying to get on the scoreboard. Ground ball, third base. Bart stays put. Next is the pitcher, Gossman. Not laying down a bunt, but he also grounds to the left side. Bart stays put. It's up to Jonathan Villar, and he grounds it back to Gomber. So he gives up the hard hit double, but then soft ground ball contact. And that's when you know Gomber is at his best. That's his game. Top four, Trey Turner facing Kevin Gossman. They did not choose to make the pitching change. And Turner gets a hold of one. Drilled the deep left, and this one is gone. Solo homer for Trey Turner, number 13 this year. And it's got to be the first I've ever actually hit with him. It barely left, but we'll take it. If Turner turns around his season to end the year, this can definitely be a playoff team. 3-0. Bottom four. Gomber's at it once again with the soft ground ball double play. Two down. Here's Mike Yastrzemski, and he'll beat the shift, and there's a lot of daylight over there. Geronimo chasing this one. He gets to it as Yastrzemski is about four feet from second base. He'll stop there. Next, your mean Mercedes with the drive. And that ball will get out. Mercedes hits number 14 on the season. This inconsistency is why Gomber is pitching relief instead of being a starter. We can get those great ground balls, and he picked up a bunch of them in this outing, but what wasn't hit on the ground was simply too much. A couple doubles, a home run. We go to the fifth now, a one-run game, and again, Geronimo finds the right spot with this hit, and he will get the double. Brendan Rodgers with two down, grounds it to the right side. And a tough play. Great job at first base. Giants keep it a one-run game. Robert Stevenson enters in the fifth inning. Gomber only goes two innings. And Stevenson's game is all about the swing and the miss. He's a lot of fun to pitch with. And I'd like to know, like, his whiff percentage as a pitcher because it's just one after another when he's out there couple strikeouts to get through the fifth and we take this bottom six Stevenson still out there and that's a drive from Mauricio Dubon 
Back goes Geronimo with enough room. Maybe that leaves if this game is in Coors, but this is a completely different offensive environment. Ground ball, Stevenson covering, two down. Tying run in scoring position. Yastrzemski on the ground. Routine play, inning over. Colorado holds on to that one-run lead. Alex Colome enters in the seventh. He picks up a strikeout of your mean Mercedes. He's been a nice surprise this year. He has pitched so many good innings for us. Pedro Leon with a ground ball, ending the seventh. Colorado's offense running cold, but the pitching is picking it up. We go to the eighth inning. David Geronimo, 3-1 count, and this time he bounces it to short, and he's retired. Brendan Rodgers up next. He got all of this one. Drilled to center field. This is deep, and it stays in the park made such good contact and it really didn't even come that close to being gone after the rogers long fly ball trey turner draws the walk and he heads to second base stealing it with ease 27th stolen base of the season can connor joe bring him home turner takes off again as joe follows off the slider up Turner takes off again, but Joe swings and misses to end the inning. A close one here going into the late stages. We go to Sir Anthony Dominguez, and we've been over his inconsistency this year. The control has been a problem, but he starts it off here. A quick two-pitch out, and those quick outs are so key for him to not have those pitch counts get out of control. And it's the walks that make that happen. Jonathan VR, good eye at the plate. He draws the five-pitch walk. Mauricio Dubon up next. This is in the dirt. VR takes off, and the throw from Nunez is not in time. Again, the tying run, a base hit from scoring. Dubon swings and misses. But will he chase? 3-2. Popped up over his France, and he doesn't have enough room for it. Another 3-2. This one's popped up for Nunez. I think the better strategy with Dominguez is not to try to paint the corners, but just dare them to hit this fastball. Here's Tommy LaStella. 3-1, and the second strike. Full count. Cold strike three at 101, and that ends the inning. Big strikeout for Sir Anthony Dominguez. We'll take this lead into the ninth. Last chance to add on to it. Off the bench, Garrett Hampson. 3-2 and back to the bench with another strikeout. Hasn't been a good season for him. Brandon Nimmo having a quiet day. 0 for 4, but good luck getting him 0 for 5. Two out base hit. Brian Reynolds 0 for 4 at the same time, and that kind of helps explain why we didn't do much for a lot of this game. But that wasn't called at the top of the zone, so two aboard. Ty France with a 2-0 count. Just in front of it, Brebbia left the slider up. 3-1, way inside, and the bases are loaded. A single and two walks, and now a chance for David Geronimo. Base hit left field, and this one's going all the way to the wall. Two come around. Geronimo to second. A two-out rally for the Rockies to take this lead from one to three runs. Three hits on the day. He just keeps getting better. David Geronimo having the season we hoped he would and now we give a three-run lead to Taylor Rogers who came in a bit fatigued but I felt like he could probably handle this we'll warm up Michael Givens just in case and Mike Yastrzemski jumps on the first pitch it's out to right field and gone maybe Rodgers shouldn't have entered this game. 18th on the year for Yastrzemski. Now there is a three batter minimum, keep in mind. 
So no matter what, Rodgers has to pitch the two more. Energy there in the yellow. Your mean Mercedes at the plate, and there's a good curveball over for strike one. 0 1 from Rodgers. On the ground, Turner at short, jumping throw, and he's got the first out of the inning. Rubned Odor next. Breaking ball can't get over. There's a better one. 1 2. Too far outside. Now low. And the 3 2 is low again. And that is going to be it for Taylor Rogers. Shouldn't have put him in the game. I felt like we might be able to get away with it. But the fatigue was just too much. So Michael Givens gets the save opportunity. Full count Joey Bart. This is in the dirt. And that's going to bring the tying run to the plate. Two on, one down for Lorenzo Kane coming off the bench. He comes in hitting 204. That's popped up. It's hooking foul. Nimmo comes in and can't make the play. One and one from Givens. What a pitch. Change up gets strike two. That's off the plate, and this count also runs full. Payoff pitch to Kane. Strike three looking. Givens comes back with the change up, two down. It's up to Jackie Bradley Jr. Slider is in for strike one. Fouling off the fastball, Givens ahead, 0-2. That is the ball game. Michael Givens shuts the door and the Rockies sweep San Francisco. Made it too interesting there at the end. Always got to have some drama. But the David Geronimo double gave us the insurance we needed to seal this game. 5-3. Colorado wins getting their 65th victory on the season. Two away from our win total from a year ago my big takeaway from this game is man david geronimo is good three for five two doubles two key runs batted in four straight wins for the rockies but i want to end this episode by talking about one of our players at triple a soon the rosters will expand and we can add two more players to the active roster and there's a good chance that one of them ends up being zach veen He's actually put together a solid season. The ratings are heading in the right direction. He's at 69 overall. It might be a nice time to add him to the active roster soon as Jonathan Daza hasn't played well coming off the bench this year and we could use a little more depth there in the outfield. So Zach Veen at AAA. Let's go check on a matchup with Albuquerque, the first place isotopes. Looking at Zach's ratings this year, the contact versus righties is up six, but his contact versus lefties is down three. However, he's plus seven power against lefties, so he's very boom or bust, it looks like, in those lefty-lefty matchups. I feel like he might be able to be a solid defender for us, though. And not just because of that great play against the wall, but he's at 71 fielding, 63 arm. I'll have to compare a few ratings, but obviously defense in the outfield has been a weakness this year. And if anybody can stand out defensively, they're going to have a chance to get some playing time. Maybe as a starter, but definitely as like a late game sub if we're just trying to hold on to a score, especially playing in Coors Field. Making those defensive moves, I think, is kind of key in the outfield. So for Zach Bean, he's only 21 years old. We all had higher expectations for him by this stage of the series, but it's baseball. Who knows what's going to happen? And we're seeing him put together a more complete season now. It seems like he's either ready for the show or very close. And we have already used two of his three options because he was on the 40-man roster when this series got underway. So if not here with September call-ups, definitely next year I'd be looking at hopefully getting him on the big league roster. We definitely want to give this bench a boost though as the season comes to an end. 
65 and 59 now for Colorado, and we didn't go anywhere in the standings. Everything stayed put. But we're close to eclipsing last year's win total, and we still have some time to get on a roll and hopefully put us in position to make the postseason. We have a new home run leader on this team with Brandon Nimmo topping Ryan McMahon hitting his 22nd on the season. I can see that going back and forth all the way to the end of the year. Also, David Geronimo has gotten into fourth place. I think he could finish second or third on this team. I do feel like this team is trending in the right direction. I'll have to take a look at how many head-to-heads we have left against these teams in the wild card hunt. But I do think it's going to take at least one solid hot streak, like an eight game streak for the Rockies. We have to make up five and a half games of ground. So we definitely have to get hot or a bunch of teams got to get cold. That is going to do it for this episode, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the action. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did. More Rockies coming your way soon as the road to Rocktober continues. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. I'll see you next time.